both co-hosts? Are we both co-hosts, Emma? Yes, I started the recording. Perfect. That seems to be the one thing we need. As long as we're co-hosts, we can share things. <laughs> We'll start at 2.10, okay? Sure. Just give it enough time for the people to find their breakout room. We'll start in a few seconds. Sorry, do you want me to give you the reminder? Yeah. Um, so two at two thirty-five. Two thirty-five, sure. And then another one at two forty-five. Yeah, will do. will do. Or two forty. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So welcome everyone to my, my session. For the last five years of the Women in Engineering Summit, we have never touched this topic before. We have danced around the topic of, is, is this about the law? This, this thing about 30 by 30? Is it about targets? Is it about metrics? Um, and 
nobody has actually made a presentation on it because it's an uncomfortable topic. You ask half the women in an office and they don't want targets. They don't want to be known as the diversity number or the diversity pick. And then the other half, they support it. They, they see the value of it, but they're still worried about being known as the diversity um, pick or selection. So let's talk about what the 30 by 30 actually is and what the Canada Employment Equity Act says, what it reads. The actual law reads because we, we need to become more comfortable, I think, with the concept of targets. We use them in project management all the time. I worked in pipelines for 20 years, actually 16 years. The last six has been teaching pipeline construction. But for the first 16 years of my career, I was building pipeline projects. We always had a target. You cannot make money. You cannot plan a project if you don't have a target. So to leave diversity as a, as a nice to have, no target, no metric, no goal is inviting trouble. I used to run projects like that. The client didn't know when they wanted the oil flowing on the pipeline and it never works. It never works. You have to have a target. If, if the target is important to you, if it's good for society, you need to have a target and everything, the whole use of resources has to be focused on that target. So that's one of the reasons I like the 30 by 30 initiative, because finally we have a project management goal that by the year 2030, 30% of newly licensed PNGs and PGOs, PNG is professional engineer, PGO is professional geologist, that 30% of, of those in the year 2030 will identify as female. And right now we're at 20.6, I think. So we're close, but we're actually very far because it's been 2018, 2018 for decades. So this session will give you a fresh perspective on achieving the 30 by 30 initiative by Engineers Canada through the enforcement of Canada's Employment Equity Act. How? By comparing WFA, that's an actual metric, workforce availability, how many people in the market can do that job with actual hires, the people that you actually hire in the office. So it's very important that we compare the, the two. Just let me take my virtual background for a second. I just realized, there you go. That background might be a little distracting for, for the presentation. The biggest advantage of the 30 by 30 initiative is that it actually seeks to achieve a goal that by the year 2030, 30% of newly licensed engineers and geoscientists will identify as female. This is being, this is being measured as a quota, a target. I teach project management in universities to project to engineers. And I always teach them, you have to have a plan. So if you don't have a plan, you're not gonna get there. You, you might achieve the wrong, the wrong thing. My bio is already on the website. You already know it, so I'm not going to cover it. But these are the three things I wanna, I wanna present today. First, tell you what the Canadian Employment Equity Act is, what the 30 by 30 initiative is, if you don't know the details, explain to you how project management survives by having a target. And then finally, enforcing the act by comparing that number of workforce availability people, how many people in the market can do that job with the hires in, in the office. Until you compare those two, you don't really know if your office is diverse, um, meaning that looks like society. So Canada's Employment Equity and the 3 Initiative, the Canadian Employment Equity Act is a federal law and the 30 by 30 initiative is by Engineers Canada. So I'll tell you more about that. Project management is just the collection of tools and techniques 
to execute a, a target or a goal by keeping it on budget and on schedule. Project management is taught everywhere in every language in the world because we are trying to make money for our clients, right? And if you don't have good project management skills, you may be wasting the money or delaying the schedule. And finally, how do you enforce this? You report. Can you imagine if you could see the report for every company in, in, uh, in Canada to see if their hires match the availability of the workforce? Does it match society? That is how you measure diversity. Now, this is a phrase by Walt Disney. The way to get started is to quit talking and begin doing. We've been talking about diversity in engineering for, I mean, 30 by 30 began maybe 10 years ago, less than that. Um, a lot of talking by companies, but um, we need to start doing and the numbers have to, have to display that. Here's a disclaimer. Some of you may be against targets. I completely understand. I, I said at the beginning, half the people are against targets. They don't want to be known as the diversity hire and they don't want for others to be known as diversity hires. The other half, they, they understand the concept, but they don't want, they, they feel a little uncomfortable with it. So I'm okay with you, however you feel. I'm just gonna show you the importance of targets. Um, being against targets, it's okay. You're not comfortable with it. But the fact is we need them, right? We need, we need targets. This is an article supporting the first position. I, I hate targets. Fortune magazine, very famous website, very famous magazine. Article was why focusing on diversity numbers will not really make companies more inclusive. Progress in making industries more diverse and inclusive remains far too slow. And in some cases, it has gone back. It has regressed. Part of the problem is that tunnel vision focus on the number. So that supports your feeling, right? Too much focus on the number. Next one is a Forbes article, another famous website, another famous magazine. Title is inclusion, not only diversity should be the goal if we want an equitable workplace. Efforts at diversity will be futile, useless, futile is a fancy word for useless, if we do not also strive for inclusiveness. We are never going to make any progress by adding talent from diverse backgrounds if we do not fix inclusion and culture issues. And the last article is from uh, the HR director, that's Human Resource Director Magazine. I never knew about them before. I, I found them through Forbes and, and the other magazines. Title is, diversity targets don't work. They ignore the real issue. There's too little diversity in hiring processes in general, enforcing diversity targets at the top simply will not resolve the issue. Movement cannot be made through enforcing diversity targets. Instead of focusing on addressing the heart of the issue, meaning modernizing recruiting strategies will drive the real change. So these three articles, they talk about the thing that you feel. We should not be focusing on numbers. This is the wrong way to do it. Now let's look at the other side of the coin because the other half of the people, they realize we need targets. We need them. So these are articles in support of the we need targets perspective. IMD is, um, is a university, actually, university. Diversity and inclusion, a case of targets, quotas, or free willing. Emerging data on the workforce. One, one second. Emerging data on the workforce impact of the pandemic shows that women were more adversely affected than men during COVID. More women lost their jobs than men. How to reset the clock will address many steps and one of the most imminent and impactful ones involves setting diversity and inclusion targets. We regressed during COVID. 
So if you don't believe that biases exist, how do you explain that? How do you explain that more women lost their jobs than men, percent-wise, okay? The next article, Forbes article, inclusion, not only diversity, should be the goal if we want an equitable workplace. Numbers ensure transparency. Don't we want that in our companies? Transparency. Numbers ensure transparency and accountability. It seems a common sense practice. Companies should be transparent about the numbers. Most companies fall short of these goals, but specific targets are important. Promises to try harder. Let me say that again. Promises to try harder do not work. Promises. This is a, an interesting situation. Humans, by the way that we act, we need some kind of pressure to brush our teeth, to lose weight, to drive under the speed limit, to wear a seatbelt. We need some kind of pressure to do the right thing. Promising that you're going to drive under the speed limit doesn't work. There has to be some kind of fear, like spending too much money on, on, uh, on the bills or getting stopped by the police and actually getting the merits on your driver's license or hitting your car with somebody else's car that is also going fast. So there has to be a level of fear or a level of accountability for us to stay under the speed limit. And that is the easiest example I can give you. Everything else we do, we need some kind of consequence to what we're doing. So if we don't have the numbers, and if you're not supposed to meet those targets, what is the motivation to achieve diversity targets? That's the perspective of the article. The last one is from HR director, that same Human Resource Director magazine. Diversity targets don't work, they ignore the real issue. There's too little diversity in hiring processes in general, and forcing diversity targets at the top simply won't resolve this issue if the talent isn't being brought in from the bottom too. What we need is a complete overhaul of recruitment, of hiring. How we hire people today might still look like how we hire people in the 60s or in the 50s. That is not working in 2022. And I'm not even talking about women, I'm talking about young people. There are people that are entering the workforce now and are becoming supervisors for the first time. They are not understanding the system of hiring. So those three articles support the other side of the coin, which is maybe we need, we need targets. Now, for the Canada's Employment Equity Act, the future of work is changing. According to Engineers Canada, about 1% of Canadians are working in engineering and women make up less than 20% of that 1%. So 20% of 1% is 0.2%. Studying STEM, science, technology, engineering, math, is actually critical for the future makeup of jobs. If women are not trained in STEM, we're going to lose any advantage we have in future societies, even today. So we need to fix that because a big portion of the population, actually we're the majority, women in Canada are, I think 51% of the population. We are the majority. And if we are not trained on STEM or have access to STEM training or have access to STEM jobs, more than half the population of the country will be at a disadvantage. Think 20 years from now, even 10 years from now, the jobs that are going to be existing 10 years from now do not exist yet. Those jobs haven't been invented yet. So if we have the majority of the population of a country at a disadvantage on STEM training and STEM jobs, we are hurting them. And we're hurting the economy as a whole. So according to Engineers Canada, Women make up 22% of the engineering undergrads, so people that graduate with a bachelor degree in engineering. 
but only 13% are licensed engineers in the country. PNGs, I mean, professional engineers. I don't know the percent of PGOs, but um, for, for, for PNGs is 13%. So why is there a difference between 22 and 13? Never mind between 50 and 22. What about 22 and 13? There is no full transfer from a bachelor degree to a PNG. Health-related programs such as medicine and dentistry are beating us. They have over 50% of the student base uh, identify as female. Veterinary students, veterinary science, 80% of the students are female. So those programs are already you know, showing us what the future can be. So is your office engineering staff composed of between 13% to 22% of females? So if you have a department that is all in engineering or a company that's in engineering, do you have at least 13 to 22% of those employees identify as female? That's the question. This is how you run pipeline projects. This is how you build pipelines. This is how you build roads, high-rise buildings, water treatment plants, nuclear plants. You need to know how much and how many and how soon of anything. We always start pipeline projects, but how much money you want, how much oil you want transported per hour or per day or per month. That's how you start and then you reverse engineer and then you give them, I don't know, 10 tanks, 50 kilometers of pipelines, six pump stations, you know what I mean? So you need to work in reverse. Now, the 30 by 30 initiative was first conceived by APEGA in 2010. It was adopted by Engineers Canada in 2015 as the national goal of raising the percentage of newly licensed engineers who are female engineers and geoscientists who are women to 30% by the year 2030. Why 30%? This is a scientific tipping point. Um, math statistics tell us that when something reaches 30%, it is always going to be above 30%. You can think of biological processes like a virus. When a virus spreads, when it reaches 30%, you know, penetration in, in, in terms of infected humans or animals, you say that that's a pandemic, right? So a 30% is the tipping point. 30%, if you go to 30% of your gym membership in one year, you're likely going to finish and stay going to the gym until the end of the membership. So that's the tipping point. Reaching this 30% will drive that shift of the overall membership over 30% for good. It will never go back to 17, 20, or any of them. So that's why the goal is there. This is the map today. We don't have the, um, the map for 2021 yet. I have 2019, so it's the year just before COVID. Look at Alberta, 20.0%, national 17.9%, so we exceed the national average. This is 2020, the year of COVID. The number in Alberta went up 23.5%, national 20.6, so it went up as well. We don't have the numbers for 2021 yet. Obviously, we had very little staff available to do the reports because everybody was either working from home or they were laid off, whatever was happening to, to, to the collection of that data we're behind in getting the numbers for 2021. But this is my goal. <laughs> this is what I want. I don't want us to just make it to 30% by December 31, 2030. I want us to break it, 35, 40, right? That number has nothing to do with reality. We can make it happen. There are countries in this world where 50% of the female of, of the students in engineering are female in engineering. Countries like Colombia, Panama, 
uh, India, China. The, these are countries that maybe there is a social incentive, a business incentive to send your daughter to engineering. We see that already. So it is definitely a societal thing. We, we can definitely fix this. I hope that by then Alberta hits a 40% so that we bring up the average for the whole, the whole country. Because I actually teach engineering. I teach first year of engineering. So I see it. I see the classroom. I enter in September, right? September 6th of every year. And I look at my gigantic classroom and I can count the women in seconds, right? The ones that I can visibly tell, right? I want to be able to walk into the classroom in September, maybe of 2030. Let's make it so that it's September of 2030. I want to walk into that classroom and I want to be able to say, I don't have time for counting <laughs> all the women in this room, right? So that's, that's the goal. That's the 30 by 30. The search for employment equity. Now, the definition, I'm going to show you the actual page where the Employment Equity Act is listed. It is uh, on the Justice Laws website. Did I give you the link? Ah, you just have to search it. Justice Laws website. It will pop up immediately. All the laws of all the Canadian government are there. You just search for Employment Equity Act. Now, what the Employment Equity Act says, no person shall be denied employment opportunities or benefits for reasons other or unrelated to their ability to do that job. We do this every day. <laughs> we choose one person over another. Same resume, right? Or we hire the person that has a lower resume for something else that has nothing to do with their ability to do the job. The act also calls for the correction of conditions of disadvantage in employment. Not just don't deny people work for reasons unrelated to ability, but also correct the conditions that made it so you would not be have you would not have a diverse workforce. This act applies to private sector employees, such other portions of the public sector employing 100 or more employees. So this applies to every company in Canada, public or private. Everybody falls under this law. Now, what does it say? I gave you, you know, images of, of what it says. You'll have it in the recording. Eliminating employment barriers, uh, making reasonable accommodations, establishing short numerical goals, making sure you know how many people you hire for each community, that's degree of representation, and availability of qualified persons, that's workforce availability. So you need to know these numbers. How many people do I have hired? And how many people am I supposed to have because that's what society is offering to me? Between 22% or 22 engineering graduates and 13% or 13 pH holders, uh, of course, should be the target, right? Between 22 and 13, why? Because that's workforce availability. You cannot hire more than what we have, right? That same percent ideally applies to your engineering managers, engineering directors, and engineering executives. And geoscience, of course, not just engineering, but geoscience too. This is a refreshing perspective on what we should be asking our companies to do. That's what we should be asking for, between 13 and 22%. If they want to do more than 22%, great. But at least we can hold them to that number. Now, what happens with the Minister of Labor? According to the Act, the employer may file a report using electronic media in a manner specified in writing by the minister. So either in paper or electronic. The availability of the reports for private sector employees, every report file shall be available for public inspection. So it is very possible these reports already exist for private companies. It's just that we have never asked for them. 
asked to see them. They're definitely not posted on the website for those companies. So that's the two. At adding those two, the 30 by 30 plus the Employment Equity Act should get us closer and closer and closer to that target by the year 2030. I'm not inventing anything. This is the website of the federal government. And this is the website of Engineers Canada, which is the umbrella organization for all the regulators of engineering and geoscience in Canada. Every province falls under some kind of regulator. And Engineers Canada is the umbrella organization to support the work of those regulators. So project management. Project management, I'm sure you've had this training before or your boss told you to take the training or you have seen people do project management at work. Examples like achieving 30 by 30 is most definitely a project. Most definitely a project. Projects are short in sh of short duration and they have to have a, a, a specialized target or goal. So achieving 30 by 30 is of short duration. We only have 80 years left. And it achieves a specific goal, which is 30 by 30, 30% 30 by 2030. So that falls under the definition of projects. I'm not going to go through all the training I give to my students in uh, project management, but you're supposed to execute earned value analysis. Are you close to the target of spending your client's money, for example? Do you have to do reports for your client? Yes, you do. Do you have to do reports for your boss at work? Yes, you do. This is the only way that we can keep track of our projects. Monitoring the status of the project schedule and managing changes to the schedule baseline, it's an everyday thing at work. We should be doing the exact same thing with 30 by 30. Engineers Canada is doing it, APEGA is doing it, but is your company doing it? That's, that's the question. This is the only way that you can stay on track, recognize deviations to the plan, take corrective and preventive, preventative actions, and minimize risk. This is a typical graph of showing the progress of a project. We need a graph like this <laughs> with the 30 by 30 being measured in engineering firms, companies that hire hundreds of engineers, and even small companies with 10 engineers, right? If you want to read the latest report by Engineers Canada, it was issued October of 2021. The link is there. So just how I found it, because I couldn't get to that link myself. I kept typing the numbers wrong. I just searched 30 by 30 data report Engineers Canada. And hopefully you'll get directly to the slides. They are doing earned value analysis. They collect the data from all the regulators and they analyze it and then they give feedback to the regulators about what's happening. Not having a target and only relying on promises is not how we run businesses. That we don't promise the client, I will do my best to spend the money and build you that pipeline, no. We say, we're going to spend this money. The pipeline is going to be ready by this day. And let's do a contract so that if I'm late, I get penalized. And if I'm early, you give me a bonus, right? That's how we run businesses. We should be running the 30 by 30 initiative in the same way. Now, I made up my own report Claudia, for the future. Sorry to cut you off there. You have about five minutes to finish your Sounds good. section. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. So I gave you a graph, and this is just a project management graph. The point is to get to 30%. Right now, we are at 20%. So we have time. We have eight years, eight years to get there. But we need to make those targets um, uh, smart, measurable, and specific. I'm going to show you the comparison between the two uh, years. What does this mean? It means the project is going well, trending up well, right? If we never had these reports, we would never be able to find it. Now, 
I'm not going to show you all the details of the case study because it's numbers and you're going to get overwhelmed or you're just too late to have this. But this is what the government of Canada did to analyze their own workforce. This is an old report. The other ones I haven't been able to get a hold of. But they measured WFA, which is workforce availability, how many people in the workforce can do this job compared to what the hires were. So they meet it on the standard staff, but not in the executive. Visible minorities, they meet it on the general staff, but not in the executive staff. Aboriginal people, this is a whole other presentation. They meet it on general staff at the government, but not in the executive. Interestingly enough, they meet it under persons with disabilities. Like they, they have a, a range between WFA and, and, and hires, and they actually exceed it. It's, it's fascinating. I would love to see this report for us, for diversity, gender diversity to start uh, in engineering. When you get that report back, you should be able to know if it's trending well, right? So in conclusion, we need to start doing, we need to quit talking and, and start doing. There is very much a need for this. It's already proven that having a diverse workforce increases profits by 20%. It's a fact. Is, is whether you want it or not, right? So this is your action item. You should support female engineering and geoscience immigrants to successfully get their PNG or PGO. You should ask your company to set targets. Um, this is not going to be a, an accident, it needs targets. And you should ask your employer to track diversity numbers the same way the public sector does and ask them to publish it. This is, this is not a favor you're asking. This is project management. So it was an honor to present to you. And Amu, do we have any questions on the chat? Uh, yes, we do have one from Seema. Yeah. Um, so she's asking, does it state that more women lose their jobs or more women have to leave their jobs? Uh, during COVID, you mean? Uh, I believe she's referring to one of the statistics, but uh, Seema, feel free to unmute yourself and ask the question yourself. Yeah, it was um, during COVID, you had that stat that came up and said that they had to, you know, 30, however many women lost their jobs. So I was just wondering if it was lost their jobs or had to leave their jobs for whatever situation. Um, it was mostly the, the, the layoffs. So the layoff numbers, they seem to hit women more than, than men. Um, makes sense when you think about who has the power in the office. And a lot of the lower level jobs were filled by women. Um, so that, that was, a, that was a, I guess, proof that the power was not being held by the, by the female employees. Um, they had the lower jobs and those were the first to be cut when companies started losing market share. And um, I, I used to work in oil and gas. How we fired people during the, the oil collapse in 2014 was definitely not done equitably. People were making personal decisions on who was going to get fired or laid off. And there was no management of how that was getting done. So it was, it was, uh, it already happened to Alberta before 2014 to 2019. And then poof, we got kicked again with COVID. Humans make interesting decisions. Yeah. What's the other question? Um, um it's not a question, it's a comment from Anna. So she's saying, to meet 30% of newly licensed engineers as women by 2030, that's eight years away, 
means by this September, at least 30% of the first year engineering students need to be female. That would be nice, um, but we don't need them. We can actually get immigrants to get their PNG. Immigrants already have engineering degrees and geoscience degrees, so we can use young people and also immigrants. So it is possible, yeah. So that was all the questions and we have about 25 seconds before we <laughs> the breakout room. If you want, just add more questions because we will respond to the questions and post them with the answers. So you're free to uh, put, put, put more questions on the chat. Yeah, it's, this diversity thing is not a favor, it's good for the economy. Yeah, very good for the 